on my birthday. Yeah. Maybe speak a little louder. On your birthday, right? Your birthday was yesterday. I'm, no. My birthday was, what, the second? Yeah, yesterday. It was yesterday. I had a rebirth on the February, on February 2nd, which is my birthday. Right. The day before, I was on the... You were on the brink of on death. the brink of death. Right. I truly felt as though I wasn't going to make my birthday, which is what I set out to do. This is your 95th birthday you're talking my about. 95th birthday, right. which is on February 2nd. Right. I was on the verge of death, thinking of going to the hospital to check myself out. Right. But what happened that day and the next day, I don't recall what changed my life. But my life did change on February 2nd. Right. So in other words, uh, February 2nd means um, uh, yesterday. Uh, something happened to you on February 2nd. You don't consciously recall the uh, stimulus for that or the event that uh, caused this. No. But something happened. Now, uh, uh, describe what's the result of that of that um, uh, miraculous event. I mean, when you had this event, uh, what did you do? When I had this event, I was lying in bed and different things were happening to me. My breathing, which was a problem, corrected itself. And I eliminated that problem just by lying in bed and changing the way I was breathing. I also had trouble with my cough. I was coughing and I couldn't get the phlegm that was in my throat out. It stayed in its place. Right. So I kept, I kept coughing. And then time passed and the breathing that I was doing corrected the incorrections that I had in my mouth and in my throat. Okay, now, would you like to state what you did in a physical sense that helped you? Can you do that? I mean, can you talk, you want to talk about the corpse pose? The yoga pose that you did, the corpse pose? I was lying in bed and I was looking to get more comfortable lying. So I just completely relaxed, put my hands at my side and didn't move any part of my body. It was as if I was lying in the bed dead. Right. which is a strange term to use because you didn't know, you don't know the yoga terms and it's called the corpse pose or the death pose. Mm -hmm. So what you actually did was find the 
It came Depth to me clothing. without knowing what it was. Right. And after a couple of hours, I was starting to feel better. I you were in this pose a couple of hours? A couple of hours. I stayed in bed that whole day. And the uh, my my breath it was very good. I was feeling spry in my in lying in the bed. Uh, I had another problem, which was dry mouth. Right. And my mouth started getting uh, started getting wet. Right. Now, why don't you just say a few words about how you started to get your mouth wet? And what happened with my mouth was that I was I was breathing easily with my tongue touching my upper palate. Upper palate. And the more I touched the upper palate, locking in my breathing to the to to my not breathing heavily through my nostrils, but slowing down my breath intake. Okay, so let me let me just add a few things here. By your putting the tongue on the upper palate in like the tongue lock, you see, you were actually blocking the mouth from making any uh, uh, breathing. Yes. Right. No and so breathing. what you did was you 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 stopped breathing through your mouth, uh, and this tongue lock uh, helped you even more to keep the mouth closed, I so mean. that you, so you could breathe through your nostrils. Right. Okay. Which is where you're supposed to breathe anyway. Right. Now one of the things about this nostril breathing is that in some of my Kabbalah uh, lectures. Um, the uh, this is the year of Yetzira. Remember Yetzira, I the uh, Yetzira world. Yetzira world is um, in Gematria three hundred and fifteen Yetzira, but the full spelling of Yetzira uh, comes out to be seven hundred and seventy five which is what this is our year, this is our year, 775, 5,775. So the Yetzirah world is this year. So in this miraculous finding of my father that he started to breathe exclusively through the nostrils rather than through the mouth which dried his mouth, maybe the Yetzirah year and the Yetzirah world have something to do with this. And again, nobody knows. Nobody's that sensitive to know. But all we can do is give clues. And so from what he says, uh, the way I read it is, he entered the Yetzirah world. He left Osea world. He left the world of the body of the Osea world and enter the world of the nose of the Ruach a different level of being so he died it's die before you die you must be born again so to speak it's a second birth his body died and was resurrected and so how did he find this he was in the corpse position with his consciousness, the body dead, yet the consciousness still alive in the transition state. And he finds out how to breathe. And he breathes. And he feels like a new man because he is. Because all of us die every day. That's what night is. 
and we get reborn in the morning. And we are new people every morning. But do we know this? Do we recognize this? No. Who's sensitive, sensitive enough that a different part of our soul comes in? And so this part of the soul that came into him on his birthday, because a neshama shines on your birthday as potentiality. A birthday shows what the potential is in man. And a yacht sight of a death shows when one celebrates what one did. But the birthday celebrates what one can do and what the potential of man is. And here he rose himself out of the Osea world, out of the body. Still in the body, but a, a rebirth, which is actually the fifth and sixth level of the soul, the Yehida and the Etzim, uh, neshama. How God can come down again. So he came down the day before at the Super Bowl and he comes down into my father the next day on his birthday. And who's sensitive enough to feel and hear this? And that's the work of Kabbalah. So two days ago, this man was on his deathbed, so to speak, with no future, and he is reborn again. And he feels wonderful. Not only that, he has a solution for other people. To enter into the death pose. The yoga death pose. The corpse pose. To breathe through the nostrils. To keep the mouth closed. One knows this in Judaism. The nose is the organ of, bre of, of breathing. The mouth is the organ of speech and of eating. The greatest man is a man who doesn't talk too much, keeps his mouth shut. There's no Lashon Hara if the mouth is closed. And so what happens here? He's breathing through his nose, using his stomach, his diaphragm, his T-bore, his belly button. His connection to the mother is through the belly button. And here's a man, 95 years old, that just activated his belly for the first time as a breathing unit. He activated his tongue in a position of the tongue returning to the mouth as an Ouroboros. Remember, there are ten sapphiroats on top the ten fingers, and the tongue is das. And there's ten sapphiros on the bottom, the ten toes, and the sign of the bris is das down there. It's yesod. And there's a union there of the Ouroboros, of the snake biting its own tail, as the mystery of, of Kabbalah and Judaism. And here he is discovering this on his own at 95 years old, lying in illness, finding his own solution beyond medical science. And you wonder what Kabbalah is, Dad, where you found it. You find your own cure, where the physician and the patient are the same person. Not asking, doctor, save me. Write me a prescription of pills. Find your own solution in your own body, especially on this day of Tu Bishvat, where the body is the tree of life. And we celebrate today as the new year of trees. Today, Tu Bishvat is the new year of trees. And this is the body that has come out, a second body, learning how to use his tongue to close the mouth, to get the nectar from the upper palate, to tuck it back into the throat. These are deep secrets. 
and one thinks that this is only in Hindu yoga. This is in Judaism too. And so that's some of the things from this couple of minutes. And at another time we're going to do a video of Dad doing his meditation, the corpse meditation, the breathing through the T-bore, breathing down into the belly, diaphragmic breathing, and the tucking of the finger of the to of the tongue back into the mouth. You want to say something, Dad? Yes. The conclusion that I came to on the day of my birth is the understanding of breath. Breath is life. Without it, you're a corpse. And I've learned how to sustain myself with breath. And I learned that you do not breathe through the mouth. I learned that it takes a whole human being's breath to breathe, not just the mouth inhaling some air. And so I've changed my way of breathing by doing it as easily as I possibly can. And as a result, I seem to have restored my health because I can breathe and talk like I never did in the previous time. That's good. I think we're going to leave it like that. And that was a good introduction. And another I thing I must say at this time that I had trouble seeing and the new way of breathing that I've taken has helped my eyes to the point where they are now open and the white of my eyes is white, not colored. And my eye is half as much open now than it was before. I mean one and a half times one as and much. One and a half times more than it was when I was doing it the old way. Right, which is uh, uh, in Kabbalah, those who know, it's Shalem Vehetzi, one and a half, which is the ultimate amount of time. Yeah, Good. Uh, we're going to stop it now because this was a very interesting thing and let's leave it here right. before it gets cut off by, uh, Actually, what do you want to say? Yesterday. On your birthday. Was still in, you know, everything was very fresh in my mind. No, no, we're going to talk again. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Dad. Thank you.